an almost endless stream of portraits of princesses, kings, queens, scientists, politicians, military and other people of status. They are the result from one of the best portrait painters in history, Philip de Laszlo, a man who came from a very humble background in Hungary, but quickly developed himself and took the art world by storm. He would frequently travel throughout Europe and even America to complete the many commissions he received from the various nobility and royalty. And while he produced thousands of portraits, they were not simply realistic reflections of his sitter, to many of them it was much more than that. De Laszlo's goal was in his own words, I am an artist of the world and paint history, not only individuals referring to the lasting appeal of his portraits. And feel free to share in the comments if you have any favorite work by De Laszlo. De Laszlo was a talented artist from a young age and his talent and hard work brought him to the prestigious art academies in Budapest, Munich and Paris. In 1892 he met Lucy Guinness in Munich. She was a socialite from the very wealthy Guinness family, known for their beer. You can see her here. At first the Guinness family did not approve of their relationship, but 8 years later the Laszlo would get approval to marry her. That was, after he painted some of the European royalties and the Pope, he was suddenly good enough for the Guinness family. He painted his first royals at age 25, the royal family of Bulgaria, whom you can see here. In the next year, several other royalties followed. Here is Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria in 1899. And these portraits from 1900 of Pope Leo XIII also did not look bad at his resume. But before his career in portrait painting, he actually painted historical and genre paintings, including this work of the Hofbrauhaus in Munich, which you would expect the Guinness family to appreciate. Instead they wanted him to gain some status among the European upper class, and he certainly succeeded in that in time to still marry his love. The interesting thing about the Laszlo is that there is actually quite some video material available on how he painted. Here you can see him at age 59 before making a portrait of one of his models. He first makes a sketch of the model before lining up the canvas right next to her. In this way he would ensure that he could carefully capture all the details of her face and attire and the angle of the light would be almost the same for the model and the canvas. Seen like this, it is obvious that he painted her at life size and that he painted with great energy. He started with the face without underdrawing, immediately using his brush strokes to put the essential features of her face on the canvas and expanding the work from there. Throughout his career, the Laszlo always used the same palette with the various colors laid out in exactly the same order, starting with Ultramarine, Matter, Rose Matter, Zinc White, Light Cadmium, Dark Cadmium, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Shanna, and a few additional colors if he needed them for a particular project. And while he made several sketches before starting his main work, when he started the final portrait, he painted in the alla prima technique, meaning that he would directly mix the colors on the canvas and not first on the palette. This helped him to become very efficient in his paintings. You can see how he steps back to have a quick glance at his model and the painting, immediately followed by some brush strokes to make his portrait a true reflection of the beauty of his model. And the speed with which he painted, at least to get a basic portrait, was also beneficial to the model. When you see her standing there, you can imagine that it is not easy to stand in almost the same position for a long time. And the rich people sitting for his portraits would certainly appreciate the fact that they would not have to stay in the same position for too long.
While I show you some more of the Laszlo's portraits, I would like to share a few more interesting observations about his life and art. First of all, due to his enormous popularity, there have been many forgeries of his work, several of which were already painted when the Laszlo was still alive. In his diary he even writes at some point that he is annoyed because he has to go to the sales room again to confirm that one of the paintings offered under his name was not painted by him. The forgers frequently tried to create fake paintings from early in the Laszlo's career, when he was still a teenager or an art student, which was of course easier as the Laszlo's style was still in transition at that time. Another important incident in the life of the Laszlo happened during World War I. At that time he had just become a British citizen. But he continued to send money and letters to his family in Hungary, which was on the other side of the war than the United Kingdom. And while he donated large amounts to war charities and the British Red Cross, his payments and help to the Hungarians was seen as a disloyalty and in 1917 he was arrested. He ended up in prison for several months and was only released because of some serious problems with his mental and physical health. Ultimately, two years after his arrest, his case was dismissed and his reputation restored. It would give him almost two more decades in which he could continue his career and it was also the time from which we have quite some video materials. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of one of the best portrait painters in art history. In the line of artists like Anthony van Dyck, Rembrandt, Joshua Reynolds, and John Singer Sargent. If you did enjoy this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And finally, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, I always love reading them. Thanks for watching.